Hey what's up guys, so today I'm going to be making a tutorial on how to create some basic materials in Octane for Cinema 4D. And the reason I wanted to make this tutorial is because I, I got a comment from a dude on the YouTubes who was interested in learning how to use Octane for Cinema 4D. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so I got my sample text here open in the Octane Live Viewer which I just opened by going up to Octane in Live Viewer window, and then you gotta click the little Octane icon, and that should do the trick. There you go. Sometimes you gotta press it twice. All right, so there's three main ways to create a material in Octane. So you can go down to Create, Shader, Octane, and then Octane Material, and then if you double click on it, you now have an Octane Diffuse Material. The second way you can do it is going into the Live Viewer and going under Materials and choosing from Octane Diffuse, Glossy, or Specular, which will do the same thing and create another material down there. The third way is to go back into the Materials tab and open up the Octane Node Editor. And that is a bit more advanced. Um, so as you can see, the Node Editor is a little bit different. So the way this works is you have to drag things into the node editor. Um, so for example, you drag your base material, and then you can drag an image texture node, which you then connect to the diffuse channel. Um, so that's just a different way of building materials. Now let's go over the three different types of materials there are in Octane. So you have diffuse, glossy, and specular. Now what diffuse is, is think of objects that don't reflect. So um, a raw piece of wood or a pillow or skin, um, things that don't reflect. There's not a whole lot of things that are purely diffuse. Um, most materials are glossy because that is a combination of diffuse and specular. And so these are things such as this iPhone is glossy. Um, plates like ceramics are glossy. Um, like polished wood floors are glossy. Um, and then you have specular, which is things such as water, glass, ornaments that are purely reflective of the environment around it. And that's why most things are glossy because most things aren't purely diffuse or purely specular. Now within the material tab, you have all these different channels. Um, first you have diffuse, which is pretty much your texture or color. So I can change the color of this material using RGB like so, or you can go down to here and choose an image texture node and texture your object that way with a picture, or you could even use noise um, or a gradient. So let's say I'm going to use a gradient to color this object. So then I'm going to double click on it on the shader and let's up the turbulence a little bit and you can see what that does. Let's apply this material to our sample text and see what it looks like. So there, there you can see that's the color channel pretty much. Um, next let, let's make it glossy so we can check out what the specular is doing. Um, so specular, I can disable this diffuse channel completely. Now you can see exactly what's happening with the specular. And it's, it's reflecting all the text and light around it. You see that area light? it is being reflected in the specular. So that's specular. And you can control the amount with the float. So see, I can bring it down to zero and there's no reflections, it's just pure black. Or I can bring it all the way back up. Next you have the roughness, which is the roughness of the reflection. So when I bring up the float number, you can see exactly what's happening here. That light softens up and it sort of blurs. So that's just Zero is a perfectly clear reflection, and then all the way up is a very almost diffuse look of the light. So that's that. Um, next you have film width, which you can think of as bubbles have this purpley green fringe tinge to it around the edges. And so that's what the film width is. So when I up this float, you can see what that does you can see that there's some pretty pretty trippy stuff. So that's just if you want some sort of film effect going on. You can see what that's doing. Um, then you have your bump channel, which you can then load an image into. 
by going under C4D Octane and then Image Texture, and that will drive your bump. So why don't we put a picture of wood in our bump channel, just so we can see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good. So now it looks like the text is made out of a piece of wood, almost, right? Why don't we turn our diffuse back on? And let's get rid of that ugly gradient. And let's make it white. And the bump doesn't actually um, add any 3D effect to the text. It's purely a surface effect. So this text is, it's still f a flat plane. It just appears as if it's being affected by the light, it, as if there were a displacement on it, but it's not displacing it. So that brings us to our next channel, which is normal and displacement. Now I'm not completely sure what the difference is between normal and bump. Um, I know they're similar, but I know that the displacement actually extrudes the 3D image based on a texture that you give it. So let's use displacement. And I'm going to go down here and add a displacement node, which is very important. You can't do this by simply going up to texture and loading an image like you normally would. You have to add the displacement node. So I'm going to click on that and then double click. And now I can add a texture. So let's add wood and displace some wood. <laughs> so you can see that kind of separated the polygon faces which we can fix with adjusting the mid-level, unless you want some kind of look like that. It looks pretty interesting. So I'm gonna bring this up until those edges are connected. That's pretty good. Like that. Boom. And now you can see that the text is displaced. And if I zoom in here, let's see what it looks like. So you can see it looks very pixelated when you zoom in. It look, You can see all the individual pixels, which show up as squares. And that's because of the level of detail we have set right here. Um, so right now it's limiting the displacement to a 256 by 256 resolution. So let's up that to 2K. So now we have a higher resolution displacement. And now it looks a lot, lot cleaner. And let's also lower the amount, which you can adjust right there to something like three. And then that's a lot more subtle. Looks a bit cleaner when you're up close to it. And that's the displacement. Just for fun, why don't we see what happens when we increase the displacement to a crazy number. <laughs> so you can see it's slowing down my computer quite a bit. Um, and it looks pretty weird. But uh, yeah, if you ever want to make some pretty abstract stuff, use displacement. <laughs> so I'm going to bring this back down to a more reasonable number so my computer doesn't crash. <laughs> and that's displacement. Um, other than that, you also have your opacity channel. So you can actually use an image to drive the opacity of your material. So you, essentially, you can create an alpha channel. And so all you have to do is load an image and this works best with black and white grayscale images. So like a purely white and a purely black image. So I'm gonna try and find something like that. Let's see. Um, here, this is the perfect picture to use because it's purely white and black. And you can see exactly what that's doing. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this opacity channel off for a second and then back on. And you can see this grass picture is driving the opacity. So now it looks like a cutout. So you can use that to create some cool effects as well. So one last thing I want to show you before we go is the mixed texture material. So what you can do, if you go up to create shader octane, you can create a mixed material. And this does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to mix two different materials together. So in order to do that, we have to have two different materials. So I'm going to rename this our wood diffuse or wood glossy. And then let's create a second material. Let's delete one of these and call it material two. And why don't we make material two um, a different color? So let's add some noise to it. And why don't we make it cell noise? 
And instead of making it black and white, let's make it green and orange, like that. So now we have these two materials. And why don't, why don't we make this glossy too, actually? All right. So now we have our two materials, and we have this mix. So what we can do is click on that, and then click on material one, material two. And now you use a slider to go back and forth between the two materials. And this is great for combining things together to create something new. So why don't we apply this to our text and just see what it looks like. So now you can see it's combining the two materials. <laughs> and there you go. So that wraps up my basic introduction to creating materials in Octane. Um, my best advice is if you want to get really good at this stuff, just get in there and experiment. That's how I do it. That's how I've always done it. And I believe that's the best way to get experience. I'm not an expert in Octane, but I just get in there and I experiment with the materials and then you can come up with some pretty crazy stuff. So get in there and start experimenting.